Hello everyone, welcome back to All The Fly. Today we're recapping Game 2 of the NHL Stanley Cup Final between the Edmonton Oilers and the Florida Panthers. So we're running into today talking about the game. And of course, this was a game highlighted by penalties. Penalties, penalties, penalties. We had 10 of them in this one. One goal was scored on that penalty. But nonetheless, let's talk about it here. Starting off in the first period, you know, Edmonton looked decent early. Very, very early. And then we'll talk about the rest. But the first sort of two or three minutes of the first period, Edmonton looked really good. They drew a penalty, and on that power play, they looked decent, I'd say. You know, you could sort of tell the momentum swung after that pen after that penalty, after the power play, they were unable to convert. But from there on out, you know, Florida started to take control of the game. You know, penalty, then all of a sudden, Fogel takes a knee, five-minute major, and then all of a sudden, there's another penalty that evens it out. And sure enough, one nothing. Ekholm scores. Edmonton is leading in a series in the Stanley Cup final. There's hope. There's hope for us Canadians. There's hope. And you know what they say. It's the hope that kills you. We talked about this in the preview. When we look at a team like Edmonton, what happens when they go up early? They collapse. And we saw it in this one especially. They just found a way to collapse. And you can't collapse against Florida. They're a team that's going to hound you. And eventually if they hound you enough, the puck is going to end up in the back of the net. They look good through one. You know, they kept the puck out of their net, but you could just tell. It's like a snowball. It's just a matter of time before it splits and breaks open and everything comes crashing down the hill. Sure enough, it came crashing down the hill. Second period, Nico Mikola with the goal to tie the game at one. And, you know, Edmonton had their looks in the second. I'm not going to say they were terrible, but they could have been a lot better. And we saw it. You know, they're playing a very trap style against the team that's going to kill you in a trap style. Leave it there. Third period time. And this is where the game got out of hand for Edmonton. Of course, the Evan Rodriguez first goal pretty early on in the period. That one, so the first one, sort of stuck a dagger in Edmonton. Then you saw a little bit of a pushback, which is exactly what you need to see. And then Dry Settle takes a bad penalty. Takes Barkov out of the game, takes a bad penalty. Florida goes to the power play, which is, I think there's the seventh, eighth penalty of the entire game for both teams. Of course, when you do that, it's not going to end well for you. Evan Rodriguez takes a penalty, or, uh, to, uh, sorry, Evan Rodriguez scores with about four seconds left. That's a tough one to watch. Then, of course, it's just desperation time. You know, it's a 3-1 hockey game. What are you going to do to come back? Not going to cut it. x ices it into the empty net, and that's the game. 4-1 to one is your final here. Florida will go up 2 to nothing, heading back to Edmonton, and this is where it gets desperation time for Edmonton. We thought it'd be in this game. We said it in yesterday's, or two days ago's video, with a recap in game one. We said, you know what? This is Edmonton's game. It's going to happen. You know, you got the whole nation behind you. This was in the paper. This. Go Edmonton, go. The country is behind you. We've come so far. You know, let's just bring it home, Edmonton. The country's behind you. But, you know, it's Canadian hockey. And it doesn't matter if it's the Leafs, the Habs, the Jets, the Canucks, the Flames, or the Oilers. And I'm missing one team, the Senators. But whenever it's a Canadian hockey team in the Stanley Cup final, it just doesn't seem to go their way. It's time for the Oilers to get serious about this series right now. And if they lose the next one, it's over. Put, make it as apparent as can be. Stu or die going back home to Edmonton. You got to win at least one if you want any shot at staying alive in the series. You got to win game three and you got to win game four, force game five back in, in Florida for a winner go home really at, at, that, at that point. And, you know, if you're Edmonton, you got to look to your star players. McDavid, quiet as can be in this one. You know, he's sure he got an assist. He looked, he looked great. He looked fast. He looked, no, no, he didn't. Every time you skate into someone's skates, you put a puck in, you give it away. That's not looking good. I don't care how fast you are. If you don't get the puck past the guy, you can't beat him. So at the end of the day, if you're McDavid, sometimes the best the best strategy is if they're going to double team you every time like they're doing, you're not going to be able to skate through them. Take yourself out of the play, bring them off, pass the puck to the middle of the ice, and take the four on three and see what you can do with it. 
If you're the Oilers, you got to play tactical here because you're not going to beat Florida playing a trap style. You got to be able to beat them straight up, mano a mano. It's going to be a good one coming up for game three. I think this is probably the turning point in the series to see if Edmonton's able to fight back in this one. But look to a guy like Bobrovsky. If he can play red hot like he has this entire series so far and this entire playoffs, really, it's lights out for the Oilers and they will be going home in, in likely four games if they can't find a way to win game three. But nonetheless, we'll talk about that in game three recap. But let's talk about the game two, starting with it's the playoffs. And this is one that was very, very interesting to watch in this game, especially. I, I counted five, six players. I'm going to go five players here with Barkov, Nurse, Exblad, Luusterainen, and Kane. All five of those players are clearly battling something. My sixth guy is McDavid in that Exblad mcdavid collision. Just looked like there was something a little bit off. But at the same time, hey, you know, it's one of those things, right? It's, it's a hockey play. You accidentally land on a guy's ankle. Both guys are fine. You know why? Because it's the playoffs and no one gets hurt in the playoffs unless it's that bad. Darnell Nurse came back, played two shifts in the third. He was an interesting one. Barkov was another one. You know, he was, we didn't see him come back. Dry Settle took a run at him late. I don't believe I saw him back on the ice. Correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, please do. But from my angle, I never saw him come back. Didn't see him on the bench. So that's a worrying sign. Hit to the head, probably in concussion protocol. Something to monitor as we move into game three. That would be a huge loss for the Florida Panthers if they were unable to, to keep Barkov in the lineup. Louis Dorinan, he was fine after the Fogel knee on knee. Sort of had to go back to the dressing room, come back in. He looked okay. I don't think there was anything to that but nonetheless time will tell there and then of course Vander Kane you know they showed it on the broadcast he was clearly battling something he's still playing he's been fine so far we'll see if that changes in game three as well the next one is the power play and let's talk about the power plays here 10 total just one of those games where it's just a chippy game Everyone knows what's going on. It's just you got to be able to remain disciplined, especially when you're facing a good team on the other side. You can only tempt fate for so long. Sure, the Rodriguez goal was scored with four seconds left, but nonetheless, if you tempt a power play long enough, doesn't matter if it's Edmonton's, doesn't matter whether it's Florida's, if you tempt a power play long enough, one of them is eventually going to score. So be very careful heading into a do-or-die game three for Edmonton to, to avoid any bad penalties because they could cost you. And the last one here, Talked about a little bit already, but your star players have to be star players. McDavid has been shut down thus far in this series. We'll see if he can turn it around for game three. We talked about it a little bit. Play decoy as much as you can. If you're if you're McDavid, you know two guys, maybe even three, are gonna swarm you. Don't go deking through them. Take it back, skate backwards, pull all three defenders out of position, and then you have an odd man rush coming in. Be very careful if you're McDavid as well. You're going to be targeted this series. Don't fall into their trap. Move it along here to game three in the schedule coming up. June 13th is your game three. June 15th is your game four. Three and four, both in Edmonton, must win games for the Oilers. You don't want to go back down 3-1 back to Florida because that is always a tough game. That, that one would be on June 18th, and we will likely be going live for it. So be sure to hit the subscribe button and hit the notification bell so you never miss an upload and you never miss when we go live. But nonetheless, we'll take one final look here with the playoff, updated playoff bracket. But nonetheless, if you made it this far in the video, thank you for watching. If you'd like to drop a like, if you really like to, if you're subscribing, tell all your friends and comment down below your thoughts on game two of the Stanley Cup final. Until next time, see ya.